Hey everyone, welcome back to another tutorial video on this channel. Today I'm going to show you guys how to do some watercolor leopard print nails. You guys know I've become obsessed with watercolor and I'm trying to figure out how else to incorporate it into my nail designs. I have a feeling that leopard print is going to be huge for fall, so I definitely wanted to do my best to try and incorporate that using some watercolor. We're also going to throw in some Swarovski crystals and we're going to complete this entire design. Let me show you how I did it. I wanted these to be sort of fall toned, so we decided to use Light Elegance's London Fog, which is from their new fall release. It's a really nice kind of muddy, grayish toned blue color. When I look at it, I think of it as a really nice fall purple. I decided to put this all over her pointer finger because I knew that I wanted the focus to be her middle and her ring finger, which means that it leaves the pointer finger and the pinky finger for Swarovski crystals. On the background of the feature nails, I decided to use Light Elegance's Relay Gray, which is a really light gray color. It's hands down one of my favorite colors they've ever come out with. And I like to make the background of feature nails a light color. Now I didn't want to use something that was cream or something that was white, which is why I gravitated towards Relay Gray. It also tends to pull a lot of those gray tones that we're finding in London Fog, as well as the gray tones that we're going to pull from the blue that we're going to use as well, which I'll show you coming up. Now, this color is quite a bit runny, so I was finding that because of how I was applying it, I was getting a little bit into her sidewalls. So if that ever happens, I either take a super clean brush and kind of brush it out like this, or I use a dotting tool and I go around and clean it out that way. I try really hard not to get gel in my client's cuticles, but sometimes if I'm applying too much product, if I've been a little bit heavy handed like that, it does happen. So you just want to make sure that you do your best to clean everything out because gel attracts to gel. So if you get gel in the cuticles like this for color, Guaranteed you're probably going to get some of the clear gel going in there too So just make sure you're doing your best to clean it up and also try really hard not to get it in the cuticles to begin with <laughs> The blue I decided to use is Paint Blue 107. It's a nice bluish gray toned color. Now the fusion paints are not designed to be embedded. They are designed to go on top of a finished file nail because they cure to a tack free finish. So you could have problems with your gels cracking, but I prefer to embed my colors, which is what I'm doing here. Just make sure that you're keeping in mind that you may have some product breakdown issues. I personally have not had that problem, but they are not designed to be embedded originally. On her thumbnail, we decided to use I Missed You, which is also from the fall 2019 release from Light Elegance. It is an interesting color. I really like this glitter, but I find that it kind of looks almost like a sparkly gravel type of color, which is why I wanted to use it because I do think that it's so unique. I did want to pair it with some glitters from the Glitter Boutique as well. Now I do feel like the way that this thumbnail turned out doesn't overly pair or match or necessarily even go with the rest of the nails, but I love a sparkly thumb when I have my nails done and I know my clients do too. And I struggled to kind of find a glitter that would combine both the blue and the purple in it. So instead of trying to pair the colors, I just decided to use a neutral glitter like this one. The glitter that we're going to use from the Glitter Boutique is called Dazzling. And because it's kind of an iridescent tone, it's going to pull some of those blues and purples as well. I did just decide to use some of this glitter in the corner because I didn't want to cover the entire nail and cover up that glitter underneath that I actually really, really liked. I am going to embed all of these colors and glitters using my Fusion SL Clear, which I am hands down loving. I love that it's a more flexible gel, but it has a thinner consistency, which is what I prefer to work with. If you watched my previous watercolor video, then you know that I am obsessed with the Prima Marketing watercolor paints. I recently got in the Classics version, which if you're kind of struggling to decide which one to get, I would recommend this one because there's a lot of colors you can make with it. The brush that I've been using lately is actually just from Michaels. I'm really liking their watercolor brushes there. They have, um, I like the zero, the one, and the two, which is what I'm gonna use today, but two is a little bit too big in my opinion. So definitely if I'm gonna make a recommendation, it'd be to get the one. All I'm doing here is making some colors that kind of match the purple and the blue tones that we did on the nail design. I literally like hate mixing colors, you guys know this, but with these Prima Marketing watercolor paints, I find it so easy to blend and get the color that I'm looking for. 
So I'm looking to make a purple and a blue that go with the purple and blue that we're using in this design because that's what I want my leopard colored spots to be. All I'm going to do is put random spots in random sizes and in random places all over her nails. These are going to be the centered for our leopard color design. And if you're finding that your paints are a little bit too watery, just wipe off your brush and make sure you're pulling any of that water out and then go back into the spots and take some of that water out so it's a little bit drier. If your spots are a little bit too wet, the colors are going to bleed together and create their own color, which is not what we want. What I want to happen is I want it almost to look like a gradient type of color so we've got the purple kind of fading into the blue and in order to do that you need to add some water back but again you don't want to make it too muddy so I found that going back and forth between the two colors and adding more taking more away adding water taking some water away adding pigment uh, taking some pigment away is kind of gonna get that effect that I am going for On the second nail, I decided to start with the purple in first instead of the blue, and I actually really like how this one turned out a little bit better. Uh, so after I have the purple in where I want it, I'm going to go in with some of the blue, and I loved how it looked like it was a gradient and it was kind of fading, so I decided to head back to the other nail and try and, see, try and achieve the same effect by adding a little bit more pigment to the nails. This is one of the things that I absolutely love about watercolor though is you really can't make a mistake because if you need more color you just add more color. If you need less color you just take some away by adding some water to your brush. It's super easy to get the design that you're going for with watercolor versus in my opinion gel paints and acrylic paints. After your design is super dry, so usually by the time I've finished the other hand, this one is dry enough for me to work on, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna surround all of these spots with some black. When it comes to leopard print, the messier you do the black, the better in my opinion. So if you're a little bit shaky and you're getting some jagged lines, I think it looks a lot better. You wanna make sure that you're using a super pointed brush for this. I will try to leave in the description box below where I found these brushes. They're not technically watercolor paint brushes, but they work really Really well because the head is super pointed on them and when you're doing your black spots you want to make sure that you're kind of lifting your brush up and just using the tip because this will be able to help you surround and another thing with leopard print I find that doing just some plain black dots uh, some plain kind of C or O shapes it really makes the leopard design look a lot better as well so fill in any of the little gaps with just some little spots and that will make your design look a little bit better than just kind of leaving it I know I sort of touched on why you want to make sure your design is super dry, but if your leopard spots in the center were a little bit wet right now, what would happen is your black would bleed into it and you wouldn't be able to see the definition of the color. So definitely make sure that your centers are super dry before you start outlining them. And again, don't judge this design until you have those little tiny dots added as well because they really make the design come together. Just gonna say it one more time for everybody, but make sure that you're not stressing about your lines being perfect because they will look a lot better if your lines are shaky and kind of all over the place. The only other element that I wanted to add to this design were some Swarovski crystals on top of the blue nail and on top of the purple nail using opposite colors. So on the blue nail here, I'm gonna use purple velvet. Now because it is a pinky nail, I didn't wanna go as big as an SS20 in the middle, so we're using an SS12. No, SS16, and then we're going in with some SS9s as well as some SS5s to kind of frame it all in. Always try and leave in the description box below all the products and tools that I'm using, so definitely be sure to check there if you have any questions about what I'm using for Swarovski crystals. On the pointer finger, I'm using a color called Denim Blue. This is kind of a color that matches the blues that I decided to use in this nail design. I'm gonna do a similar pattern so that when she holds her hand up, it looks like it's kind of framed in the corners with the Swarovski crystals, but I can use a little bit bigger crystals on her pointer because it's a bigger nail. So the large crystal size is an SS20, the side ones are SS12s. We're gonna go in with some nines and then some fives to kind of frame it all in. 
Our very last step is to just add top gloss to the entire design. I'm using some of the Glitter Bells Tack Free Top Gloss today. Whenever I use top gloss around Swarovski crystals, I take a small brush and kind of go around them and try my very best not to get gel on top of the crystals because it will take away some of the shine. Now I do think that matte would have looked really good over top of the watercolor leopard, but we decided to go with shiny. If you guys do do a design like this, make sure you tag me on Instagram because I would love to check it out, and especially if you try it with matte because I would also like to see how it came together. You guys know how I feel about matte. I do love it for like pictures, but I also love a good shiny nail too, which is why we decided to go with shiny for this design. I do want to make sure to suggest to you guys that when you're top glossing over top of watercolor, you need to make sure it is 100% dry before you do or else it'll just all bleed together. You also want to make sure that you are top glossing twice so cure it and then do a second coat just to hold in any of that watercolor paint and avoid any sort of chipping. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you got some tips and tricks on how to work with some watercolor paint in combination with leopard print. I know I've done leopard print on this channel before, but I typically use acrylic paints. And I have to say that I much preferred working with the water paints. Plus it's a little bit easier for me to recommend tools and products for you guys to use with water paints versus what I used to use for the acrylic paints. Make sure you're following me on all of my social media. Be sure to tag me if you try out a design like this because I'd love to check out what you guys did too. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.